These days, cryptocurrency seems to be everywhere, from advertisements during the Super Bowl to automated teller machines accepting Bitcoin. And in spite of the fact that it has not yet achieved widespread acceptance as a method of payment, reports submitted to the Federal Trade Commission show that it is becoming an increasingly common tool for con artists to take money from unsuspecting victims. And all that, we have heard. But is everything in crypto a scam by itself? What do you believe? Hello and welcome back to Crypto Cash Channel. What does your crypto portfolio look like at the moment? And has the thought of crypto being a scam ever crossed your mind? In today's video, we look at how everything in crypto can be a scam. But, first, before we go on, a sub to the channel would be very appreciated. Comment, share the video, and don't forget to leave a thumbs up for the video. So, let's get into it. At the beginning of 2021, Coinbase began trading on the public market, and the reaction on Wall Street was overwhelmingly positive. Coinbase is a platform that enables users to buy, store, and exchange cryptocurrencies, which are digital assets that serve as an alternative to traditional currencies. And Bitcoin and Ethereum are the most well-known of these cryptocurrencies, despite the fact that there are over 18,000 unique versions. The initial public offering that Coinbase held was successful, and it has been referred to as the crypto event of the year. According to Vox, the success of Coinbase is evidence that Bitcoin has evolved from geeky curiosity to mainstream financial options and payment tools. So, if it has already entered the mainstream and we ought to pay attention to it now, one good strategy is to educate ourselves about the topic and its economic implications. You may have disregarded Bitcoin because its proponents are among the world's most obnoxious individuals, or you may have hated yourself because if you had listened to the first person who informed you about Bitcoin years ago, you would now be a millionaire. However, the issue that has to be answered today is whether or not this will be the money of the future as its promoters believe it will be. Or is it merely one of the most elaborate frauds that have ever been perpetrated? Well, let's begin with the most basic promise, which is decentralization, security, and anonymity. The term, decentralized, is one that is frequently used, and many people have a strong aversion to centralized forms of authority. But what exactly does this term mean to you? Peer-to-peer -peer transactions are now the standard for conducting financial business. This means that instead of going through your bank or a third-party processor like PayPal, transactions are now conducted directly between individuals. Additionally, unlike the US dollar, the money supply is not manipulated by a central bank. So, in Bitcoin sales pitches, decentralization is usually highlighted as a key benefit, and the movement in favor of cryptocurrency contains recurring themes and rhetoric. Themes like you want the government to stop bothering you in some way, or you are eliminating unnecessary middlemen and other third parties, which is an essential aspect of this cryptos. And the biggest of them all, it's about having the ability to choose for yourself, having independence, and being in control. So, there are a lot of different ways that freedom may be enhanced, but it's not clear that any of those methods would actually make a difference in the lives of the majority of people. So, why is it absolutely necessary for the average person who uses currency to do away with banks, the government, and these third parties? And is it possible that the dominance of Venmo could become so oppressive that it will make it necessary to find an alternative to the dollar as a medium of trade? The phrase, surrendering control of your assets to a credit union, may sound true, but it does not accurately describe what it means to bank with a credit union. Because, Despite some small fines here and there, the most common gripes people have about financial institutions like banks and credit unions have little to do with the fact that these institutions hold their customers' money. Bitcoin does not live up to its hype. Utilization of it does not result in an increased feeling of financial stability or security for the user. It does not free you from the regulation of the government in any way. It's not only inconvenient but also pricey, which is a real bummer. And as a means of exchange, it is almost useless due to the fact that its value is very unpredictable. It is also unable to fix these issues since they are built into the concept. However, despite the fact that it is founded on an appealing technological achievement, the blockchain, Bitcoin is not an ideal alternative money system. But what about the security aspect? The security illusion is the most significant of all. According to a significant number of the pitches made for cryptocurrencies, keeping your money in a bank is regarded as a less secure option because a third party is being trusted with it. Bitcoin has generated a lot of buzzes, much of which is on the concept of security. 
But this is due to the fact that users are not required to provide any personal information, and transactions do not involve third parties. One website cites protection against fraud as one of the ways Bitcoin will support you, as a result of the fact that individual Bitcoins are digital and cannot be counterfeited or reversed unilaterally by the sender, as with credit card chargebacks. But this, on its whole, constitutes a type of deceit. People are persuaded to assume that conducting business in Bitcoin renders them less susceptible to fraud as a result of its foundation, which is a distorted conception of the term, security. Because, if you are tricked into completing a fraudulent transaction, you are left without any options since there are no third-party organizations that you can put your faith in. In short, when you spend your money, there is no way to get it back, it is gone for good. But of course, the vast majority of us, on the other hand, are not traders. And although the fact that transactions are irreversible may reduce the risk of fraud for merchants, this property also has the unintended effect of increasing the danger of fraud for customers. It is unreasonable to expect customers to forego their right to dispute a charge, and it is misleading to refer to this practice as fraud reduction. In point of fact, it only shifts the responsibility for the majority of the damage produced by lying from one party to another. And that's not all. What about privacy? We absolutely do not mean to imply that conducting business in an anonymous manner confers no advantages whatsoever on anyone, but those who violate the law are the ones who stand to profit the most from it. However, it is important to point out that this is an argument in favor of establishing a future in which cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin are no longer required because no one is punished for crimes that have no victims. But to what extent, though, do cryptocurrencies actually offer these benefits? Well, every person who utilizes bitcoins and believes their transactions are impossible to trace is mistaken. The phrase, anonymous, should not be used to describe bitcoin since it is not accurate. According to Coin Insider, anonymity cannot be ensured when using cryptos. The Wall Street Journal notes that even while law enforcement and fraudsters are engaging in a cat and mouse game, new surveillance tools are being devised all the time, even though the victims of fraud will probably never get their bitcoin back. However, in any event, do the benefit of privacy come with the use of cryptocurrency? According to the RAND Corporation, in spite of the perceived attractiveness of cryptocurrencies for money laundering purposes, an estimated 99% of cryptocurrency transactions are carried out through central exchanges. And these exchanges are subject to anti-money laundering regulation, which is comparable to that of traditional banks or exchanges. To put it another way, in virtually every transaction, a third party, most often a company operating in the capacity of an exchange, serves the function of a middleman to facilitate the transaction. And all companies are subject to subpoenas. For instance, on Coinbase, the exchange that is bringing Bitcoin into the mainstream by making it simple to use, the first thing you will be asked to do is verify your identity by providing your name, phone number, and the last four digits of your social security number. This is done so that Coinbase can ensure that you are who you say you are. In summary, because your use of cryptocurrencies will be conducted through a legal corporation that is in compliance with the banking regulations of the United States, you will not be able to prevent the authorities from determining if you made a particular payment to a particular individual. And that's all for today's video. Thanks for watching. What do you think about your crypto security and anonymity now? And, is crypto a scam? Comment below. Let's engage. Also, if you are interested in more videos like this, make sure you like this video and subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to turn on the notification bell for more amazing videos. Goodbye. See you in the next video.